And also actually something, an update about the spectator piece, the, um, the art piece called the spectator. Oh yes. On the, the, the field. fields. Yep. Yeah. So I have those two items to add. Okay. Um, great. Well, uh, do you want to do Braille at the top, maybe 5.0, and maybe Spectator can go around the inventory? That makes uh, sense. Yep. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay. Uh, if nothing else, um, we'll, we'll just move to approve the agenda. Um, I'm assuming everybody's uh, had a moment to look it over. I've already uh, signed off and uh, looks good to me. Thanks as always, Steph. Um, just get approval from everybody. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. And then uh, adoption of the minutes. Same. I move. Yeah. Whatever. Perfect. Okay. Uh, action items. It wasn't, uh, oh, you did list it here. Thank you, uh, Steph. Okay. So uh, just running down the list action items. Number one, uh, yes. Number two, we're moving to the next agenda, yeah? Am I re reading that correctly? Okay. Uh, number three, did we, uh, we, we were working on that last meeting, a uh, bunch of uh, discussion around that. Uh, is that, how does that process work for getting into the policy? Who was who responsible for that? That's ongoing, Scott. Okay. Um, so we'll just put a question mark, uh, pin in that one. Uh, can number. I, can four. I just ask about that? Oh, that, sorry. Go ahead. That's the public art accession policy, right? <clears throat> a donation accession. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, like the donation the, process into the accession policy. Yes. Yeah. The artist who approached me asked for an update. I'll just say it's ongoing. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good. We should probably, um, yeah, we should probably hammer that out uh, so that it's not dangling um, uh, too long. I don't want to necessarily lose an opportunity that could be quite beneficial for us. So, uh, but it's tied in with our discussions about the rotating plinth thing. We'll get to that later. Uh, number four, Maureen. Uh, um, yeah. you, sorry. Yes, it's um, it's a possibility, but it always depends on the details so of course the door isn't shut but to be continued okay excellent uh over to you jillian um for the cultural spaces grant application we're really focusing on essential elements of the build at this time so i think um down the road maybe we might readdress grant opportunities for art but we just need to get the funding for the building itself Right yep. Understood. Okay. And then number six, um, I know we were all supposed to sort of uh, hammer out some wording. Um, I uh, didn't do any of that myself personally, uh, but I did just throw a document over to Steph that I ripped out of uh, some other um, uh, documents that I had um, around so we can um, later on in the meeting, we can go maybe just uh, Steph will do a share screen with that uh, document. We can just read through it um, uh, just to kind of get a sense of how, uh, how these documents uh, are drafted by other um, entities. Uh, in this case, it was a private developer. Um, so um, they do a lot of work on it, that, that sort of thing. And they, they have a lot of very good details that we can kind of maybe Think about uh, yanking out um, and using for our for our own. So, okay, uh, action items, check. Um, uh, business arising. Okay, so uh, do you want to do you want to just jump into five point zero, Jillian? Uh, was sorry, who? Yeah, Jillian. Yeah, Jillian. You had something to say about sure. that. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, take it away. Yeah, well, if you'll recall, the um, the introductory sign that we made for the beginning of the, of the, of the start of the mural yep. it was a space dedicated left on it for a message in Braille that to be determined. So um, at the opening itself or at the, the launch on Family Day, I spoke with Alex Jurgensen, um, who 
was very excited about the, the project and the work and about including a message in Braille. And he's gone back and done a lot of work um, working with his team. And so they've actually been doing two sets of work. So I'll talk about the first one first, which is the sign, the information to go directly on that sign. So um, what they're proposing is that we, and actually we spoke with Sarah Haxby today about this as well to get further update, but proposing we write on it, welcome to Nekwekulam Bowen Island. And that can, the entire thing can be translated into Braille, which is quite cool. Like, um, like all of the, all of the wording that exists visually would just be translated into Braille. Just, is that what you mean? Just, just what I just said there, just oh, welcome oh. to, Bo to Nekwekulam Bowen yeah. Island. Okay. Um, and so they have the capacity of, of writing it in the Squamish language in Braille oh, as wow. well, which Amazing. is, it's pretty neat. It's um, apparently that was a change in 2013. They made um, some big changes to what was available in Braille. So, um, so they're going to get some quotes and it's, we discussed it a bit in thought and material doing that on metal would be best because the sign itself is also metal um so they're gonna he's gonna get us some bids uh, with the different materials available because he said there is stainless copper brass there's different metals available to us and um and the, the cost of that will be under a hundred dollars so mm. that's really not a concern at all so oh sorry jillian the whole sign under a hundred dollars it's only on it's, metal it's it's well, it's just those words, right? It's just five words. It just, as soon as you put something on metal and it's got to be raised because it's in gray. Mm -hmm. Well, he's done a lot of this already. So it is, it's amazing. And I think it's a, it's something special there, that they're doing, but it's quite an interesting process, the way that they actually prepare it to, um, to be done in Braille. So they actually, they proof it um, first, they write it out in text, and then they proof it and typeset it with an electronic file into Braille, but then that's sort of um, proof printed on paper so that you can actually feel it and, and proof it that way, and then it's sent for export um, and for production, rather. So it's an interesting process, and there's this really cool special machine that does it all. So. Um, I'd like to, to present the idea that actually, actually Alex joins us at our one of our next meetings and, and tells us a little bit more about it, partly because of the second part of what he's been working on that I'll tell you about next. So, um, but to finish that up about that, that first sign, so they're going to print it first in paper so we can bring it out to the site and have a look at it um, before we get it manufactured in the, the metal. So I think that would be an interesting site visit. And I think we'd like to photo document all of that as well, because I think it's a great part of the story of the, the whole project. So I think that would be interesting. Yeah, so I like the, the accessibility points. Yeah, it's great. It's Yeah, it's wonderful. But the so the bigger project. Oh, can I so be, just oh, have yeah. a question yeah. um, before you get in, Julian? What the, so the idea would be that that small sign of braille text would then get affixed to the existing sign underneath yeah okay okay yeah so he'll send us some some information about the different materials available so we can choose like what would be the right color and you know what we think would be the best one for sure. that yeah perfect thank you for that and mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt go ahead uh, with no no sorry <laughs> and, and um and thinking about how to fix it, I don't know if the, if we need to worry about metal to metal, what we need to do there. How we no, it should be so fine. That it's uh, safe. Okay. Yeah the the sign the sign because it's a got a coating, it's not going to interfere okay. too 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 much. Yeah, we can we can sort that one out. And one of the things that was really interesting to me actually that he asked me about, he had a question that this team was wondering about whether or not we should include. Um, written in font, so if you're not visually impaired, you can read it, what it says in the Braille, because he says that there people are always asking, what mm. is the message in Braille? And I just thought that was a really interesting consideration, quite honestly. I mean, it was really sort of a, a 360 view of, of the whole process. And I, I just thought that was quite beautiful, actually, that they would ask us, would we want that? So mm. um, they would like to do that. So I... 
I, I wonder if nice. there would be a way of, uh, it'd be interesting to see the process that they use that machine and whether it would be, you know, is there some way that the, the visual text might be sort of 50% uh, opacity in the background with the braille right over top of that text might incorporate oh. uh, both of those, uh, but it depends on the process, whether that would be possible. Yeah, and I, I just don't know. I think he was also thinking there's quite a bit of room available in that designated mm. um, space. So okay, there'd be a lot lots of, of lots it. of room to play with. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. So the other thing that they've been thinking about and working on is actually a much more ambitious aspect to the project that's actually telling the entire story of the mural of all sixteen panels of the mural and telling the entire story in Braille. So um, this is very much at a preliminary stage, just exploring this possibility, including everything it would, what it would involve and, and the cost to do all of that, which again is actually surprisingly inexpensive for what they're proposing. But um, they were thinking that they could um, tell the story of each one of the panels in, um, a sheet that ends up printing about 11 by 11 inches, each individual one, um, and thinking that if we added a, a 17th panel to the full mural, that's the same eight by four configuration, same size, same panel, and then that would have the full story, that full narrative of, of the mural. So Sarah Haxby is interested in working with him on sort of working on that script because it's not just a matter of translating the web page, for example, because that's not it's not in a storytelling fashion mm -hmm. and it's too much. So um, she's interested in volunteering to do that and working with him to do that. So I think there's, as I said, this is preliminary and there's a few things for us to figure out as to whether or not it's possible, but Again, in terms of cost, he is somebody that he works with in, in the North Shore that would actually produce those for us. Um, and he thinks in this particular situation, doing it on this, a certain type of plastic would be the way to go. And it's actually fairly easy to reproduce if it gets damaged after a year. And they'd only be $3 a sheet to print. So again, we're not talking wow. a ma major cost, but... Um, but this is an opportunity that like, we might flush out the cost a little more detailed. And this might be something that the, the Bowen Island Literacy Task Group would be interested in funding because it's absolutely right up their alley. And mm. it would be quite an amazing, amazing addition to the whole, the whole piece. And um, using this particular plastic in an outdoor application like this would actually provide some really good learning for that whole the whole sector and how they use signage outside as well. So they're thinking of it from that perspective. So there's quite a bit of work to do on that if that's to happen. But um, I just spoke with him today. So I was thinking that, again, if, if this is something that we feel we'd be able to pursue, it would be great. He'd be happy to join one of these meetings and tell us more about the whole process of producing in Braille and, and all of it and, and how it serves that community. So. Well, I just, I just want to say that is really exciting, Jillian, because, you know, Bowen Island has a long history of having the blind here from when they were at, um, on Snug Point. Um, and, and I just, I just think it's a wonderful fit. I would really, really like to see that go ahead. Like having the whole panel up with the story. I just, I think it'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are you okay, Jillian, to, uh, keep pursuing that, uh, line of inquiry with them and, um, and maybe, maybe throw an action on your list. Um, you mentioned, uh, the literacy, um, programming uh, funding as a, you know, something they might be interested in, in supporting. Um, maybe you can keep, can, can that, you keep digging on that one as well? Yeah. Run that by them. Okay. That. That'd be I excellent. That. Super. I, Thank you. Yeah. And I do as part of it too. I think we do need to look at the location and think, is it the right location for somebody to be standing at for an extended amount of time as they're, mm. they're reading the story. So I, I, I have not been down there from that perspective, but um, mm. that's the update I have. And like I said, I, I, if we go further, I think we should bring Alex 
yeah. um, to come to a meeting. To Lo- love process. to hear more about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Great. Good. Well, yeah, we should. Uh, yeah, the, the 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 locating of it is definitely a, a question mark. Uh, the wall itself may not be the right thing, but you know there used to be a a covered um, uh, promotion board or or signboard down there, uh, more on the dock entrance where the parking is. That was sort of off the traffic zone. Uh, that is now gone or it's um, uh, partly dismantled. I don't, I'm not sure what happened there. We might want to maybe we investigate rebuilding part of that to house that board. I don't know. Sorry, I'm not thinking, I can't figure out which, where you're talking you about. You know, uh, one... like right, right when you, uh, right when you are heading down to the ferry, uh, instead of going on the ferry, you take a left into the dock uh, parking lot um, where the shops are, um, just at, oh, at that man. entrance, there used to be, there's a structure there, but I think there, and there used to be a, a signboard mounting area that is now gone. Like it, it's all open or derelict. Um, I was just there today. I'm blanking on, um, on what, it, what existed. I wasn't really looking at it. It used to have the story of the development of the marina. Ah, yes, so you're there were right. historical pictures. And I, I guess it belonged to um, Norma Dallas. Norma, yeah, right. Her kids were featured in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, but it went from that after the sale of the marina. Then it turned. There was also a period where there was like a, a signage directing you to the taco stand and branch and butter and and uh, the pie shop. I think I remember seeing at one point that sort of thing. So uh, none of that is there anymore. Um, okay, thank you, Julie. Like informal action item to have people stroll around there and get us get ideas about where a good safe location would be. I uh, yeah, I mean we're all I'm sure we're all down there regularly. So yeah, uh, put it in the back of your heads and and you know have a look with that in mind uh, when you get down there for sure. That that I mean that's all stuff that can be kind of uh, worked on later as we you know clarify the the actuality of, of the uh, signage and, and figuring it out. But um, yeah, great. Uh, that would be, that would be amazing. I, uh, I completely agree. Um, so 5.1. Uh, I'm blanking on this Steph. What, what was I, uh, the judging criteria, um, was that for uh, the open call? Oh, I can't hear you. Are no, you- that was, oh. I think, part of the post-mortem on the mural project. Ah. Um, and it doesn't look like anything's been provided. So maybe. Um, I probably have that document sitting not too far from here. Uh, gateway mural adjudication here. Uh, let me just open. So I, I do remember that at the last meeting, I threw out there that I recalled after the the judging happening that we wanted to review the criteria that there were some areas that we felt we could tweak. But that, that's it. I think I just mentioned that and we I don't think we've done that review or tweaking. That's all. No, you're right. No, we, we absolutely have not. And I know it was a little bit lean, um, you know, being our first, um, uh, our first go around with that. But uh, as I, as I look at it now, it's um, uh, despite the atrocious font, somebody chose that I it's almost illegible. Looks like middle English. Um, <laughs> uh you know, it's not, it doesn't seem horrible. You know, we've got uh, the categories, uh, cohesive theme, inherent meaning. So sort of a, you know, subjective uh, review of the submission. Um, is it unique? Uh, was the presentation professional? Um, is there um, uh, a demonst- demonstrable uh, skill and technique from previous projects? 
attention to detail, craftsmanship, that sort of thing. Um, fulfilled intent, uh, i.e., what is this artist? What is the artist trying to say? Um, visual impact, uh, wow factor. Um, you know, which I think, yeah. Would it be um, too aggressive to suggest that the co um, judges have a 15 minute Zoom meeting and provide their feedback on their experience with the criteria? Did you have feedback about the criteria, Councillor? This is the, um, the mural judging mm -hmm. panel. No, I'm not sure. I mean, it was quite a while ago now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, on the one hand, um, you know, uh, given that uh, as, as perhaps um, as perhaps uh, as simple as, as it was in many ways, um, it, in the end, proved quite effective. So um, I think the bigger, the bigger issue I remember um, being a problem throughout that whole exercise was the compressed timeline because we were having to push that so quickly. And that, that probably felt more onerous than, than, than the uh, adjudication notes. Um, and I, I definitely want to make sure that that aspect of it doesn't get lost, um, or missed or, or ignored for the next, uh, you know, whatever next call, uh, we put out is that we're allowing ourselves enough time, comfortable amount of time to, to run the process, um, rather than get too hung up on, uh, whether the, you know, whether the adjudication notes, um, whether there were any huge concerns about those. Um, and again, you know, the other part of that is um, the requirements, the adjudication requirements are going to change every time the project changes. Every project is going to demand certain, um, certain uh, attention focuses that, you know, we could change this or uh, make a new one and it may not quite apply the next time we want to use it anyway. So yeah, I'm not sure how useful the exercise would be, but um, I'm open, I'm open yeah, to opinions on that. It next time. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, when it comes time to do the next, the next one, uh, you know, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to generate uh, a, a document like this um, every time to some degree. Uh, hopefully building on the one beforehand, just, you know, maybe that, maybe that, um, you know, in that meeting, that would be the time that makes the most sense to review what's there for its applicability into the next one, rather than, because it feels very abstract, like Maureen saying it was so long ago, I don't know, I don't remember, we don't remember how we felt or what, what, what was coming up at that time that um, it's a bit in the abstract at this point. Okay, I'll just make a little unanimous consent agreement on that if no one disagrees. Mm -hmm. Jamie, do you like that idea? Hi, Jamie, welcome. I'm sorry, we're so busy no, in the good. gallery right now. I just sold a bunch of art. So I had like. to pick you over selling art and I picked selling art. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not offended. You, you go. Yeah, good. <laughs> and so I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, good. whatever. If it's just say yes, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. Okay. I agree with whatever Scott says. <laughs> um, okay, so the judging criteria will be updated in, in preparation for the next project. Yeah, I think that makes okay. the Make most sense. I think it'll be the most effective use of time at that point, because uh, we're going to have to do it anyway. You know, okay. um, we'd be repeating. Um, right. Okay. Uh, moving on to the work plan, uh, public art registry that uh, was handily um, attached. Um, I'd like to spend a bit of time 
let's just go through this again, uh, just to refamiliarize ourselves with what's on this registry right now. Do you want me to share um, screen? Uh, sure. Yeah, that that would be probably helpful for everybody. Then we can all uh, uh, see what we're talking about in real time rather than everybody looking at their own documents. Doesn't like my other monitor. I'm just gonna move this over. Can you see it now? Uh, no, we're seeing your minutes. Whoop. Okay. Can see Perfect. It yeah, we can. I can anyway. Is everybody else uh, <laughs> seeing that? Whoop. Sorry. On again. <laughs> You see it now. So yes. I'm just trying to get out the Word document so I can make edits. While no, it's me. perfect. Okay. Um, is that what? Uh, what format is that in right now, uh, Steph? This is PDF as attached to the agenda. PDF. Okay. Yes. All right. So, um, um, I, I wish there was a way. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, let's do a quick rundown and. Um, I'd like to somehow make a note, Steph, if we can, as we go through these, uh, if mm -hmm. anyone knows, yes or no, whether these things still exist for sure, um, that would be helpful. So uh, let's start like right from the top, uh, the stone labyrinth at Xenia. Does anybody know if that still exists, yes or no? I, I believe so. Is it from the 80s, from the 1980s? Because there is a labyrinth, a stone yeah. labyrinth at Xenia, but it doesn't look like it's from the 80s, but maybe it's just in good shape. Can you guys see the word doc now? Yes. Okay. Yes, great. Uh, I believe I walked through that little labyrinth uh, maybe last year. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Um, sorry, as we go through this, I, I remember we did want to add a column for condition or status of it. Oh, um, and maybe yeah. that can just go into the notes. Okay. We'll do that for now then. Okay. Okay. So the condition. Uh, status meaning like condition status? Okay. Like what kind of shape it's in? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, um, sorry, Steph, and let's clarify that as condition status. Because, okay, you know, we, as we start um, thinking about our maintenance schedule for these pieces mm -hmm. and what we need to do, I think having some look ahead to the future years, like when we might need to be doing repairs or whatever mm -hmm. we need to do. Absolutely. I would also think we should uh, reorder it so that the publicly owned pieces are at the top and independent or privately owned pieces that aren't necessarily our responsibility. Um, okay. But that could be- I can do that Sorry, offline, Steph. but we do yeah. want to identify your owner owner column as blank. I think owner is important. Yeah. Okay, so reorder. So you want public at the top? Like well, BIM, maybe, maybe I'm just being BIM picky right now. Well, I, I think it's easier <laughs> to find yeah, yeah. if it is. Maybe BIM at the top and then public and then private. Okay, so I'll reorder that, but this is good. Yeah, and then like condition status, there's some kind of action items there if people want to go check stuff out and report back on what condition they think things are in. Uh, now, yeah, I, you know what I could do is um, what I'll, I'll forward a, uh, it's a very simple document, artwork condition report um, that yeah. uh, I'll send out uh, and share with everybody. You can print them out. And then if you, if you're going, we can, you know, we can do field trips or go individually or whatever, but uh, when you go there, you could, it, it just makes uh, like uh, uh, lists like the, the kind of items you'd want to pay attention to and what, and you can make notes about, you know, the, the base, the structural elements, whether the, you know, whatever fasteners are still in place, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'll send that out. Um, I have a so, question. If yep. it's a if it's a private art piece or on private property, um, 
obviously we're not responsible for the upkeep, but would we suggest to the owner and say, you know, it's not safe anymore, or um, are you going to fix it up? Is that our job? Is that what we should do? Or maybe if it's on public property, but is this private property? Like the like the the labyrinth is private property, isn't it? I think so. Yes. So what what could we say, you know, and and could we say something? I mean, I guess if it was unsafe, if somebody could hurt themselves, maybe we could say something. But the most we might do is a recommendation. We we have no teeth on that one i don't think for the municipality can't come in um and and force people to to maintain things that are on their property unless it's unless like you say it's a some um public liability issue which but if it's on private property it's not a public liability uh well see with with a thing like xenia that's a private property but it's also i don't do they not host a lot of um um uh, workshops and events and things like that but i'm sure they would have insurance to cover correct yes absolutely so is it angela toth angeline toth there may be other owners as well i don't know and i for me as a bim employee i would certainly not be I would not be going on to somebody's private property and telling them anything about the yeah. state of their own mm. artwork. Yeah. At a certain point, I think I've, and I mentioned this before, you know, once we kind of clarify uh, this, um, we're also going to have to make some decisions about whether these, these things uh, remain uh, in our quote unquote registry. Um, so we, we're going to need some, um, some framework about determining whether these are technically public art or not, or what we're what we're going to call public art or not. Um, but that's that's a discussion mm. down the road. Um, well, actually, next, oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Greta. Actually, I'm just going to raise that calling this public art for items that are not on public property is a bit of a misnomer. It is. I know, definitely. And this is where we kind of got to run into that. Um, that we're going to have to uh, clarify that status for sure. Yep. So the reason uh, I was there was because she um, invited me. I was just walking around the lake and mm. she just said, why don't you come? Didn't even come with me, just gave me permission. <laughs> it felt like it was something she might do fairly often. And then, it is It is public. I've just gone there and, and mm. walked. You can just go there. up there. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's yeah. one of the key determinants too is, uh, is it, is it, is it publicly accessible without any restrictions? So it's not housed in a building that shuts down at night or something like that. Yeah, um, no. So that, that is a determinant. It's not necessarily just because it's on private land doesn't automatically disqualify things from being public art. Uh, there's lots of, lots of public art on private lands in Vancouver everywhere. Um, it, does, it does impact the discussion about who, who is responsible for maintaining it. That's, that's the main one there. Um, uh, okay, so then the next one, if we, I think we've filled in what we can do with that first one, the Stone Labyrinth at Kate's Park. Uh, where, where is Kate's Park? Kate's Hill? Turnanog. Turn so I, I think Tiernanog installed it, but I'm not sure if the land belongs to them or if it's on the municipal park land. Uh, does anyone know for sure that it's there or not there? Okay, let's put a exists question mark on that one then. I've seen it. I've been there recently and it exists, but it's very overgrown. Mm. Okay. So that's condition then, yeah. overgrown. Who's responsible? Unknown T. That, is that private? On Turnanog, is that what you're uh, Kate's Hill Park? It's ours, isn't it? Or Kate's Park? Turnanog belongs to Wolfgang. But the park itself, Kate's Park, Kate's Hill Park, is municipally owned, but right. I'm not sure that section where it's where it's installed if that's fully part of park or not. Yeah. I could find out from Bonnie. Okay. 
Okay. okay. Um, yeah, it may, we might we might have to divide uh, owner into two categories, like uh, owner and responsible, or, or, or owner ownership and responsibility. Um, actually, why don't we change that now, Steph? Ownership and responsibility, because okay. uh, we should clarify those for sure. But it could be it could be the same. Usually, it is, but it, it could be two separate parties. Oh yeah, is that right? Uh, owner ownership and responsibility. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Um. Follow up. Got an action for Jillian. Still in the lab event. Running around? Question mark. Beautiful. <clears throat> um, oh, all these questions. This is fun. All right. Uh, so should we follow up? Sorry to backtrack a little bit with nope. Angeline then. So if there is a when with a question mark, this is fun. These are fun action items. I'll call find out when if we want sure. that Okay. Yeah. And if you know, if 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 we say 1985 and it was actually 86 or whatever, I don't know that it really is critical, but uh good good to hammer out the details and get a get a hard number in there anyway. Okay. Uh is a dolphin an owl or an owl a dolphin? Um, that, that's gone, right? I haven't seen that for a while. It was looking in pretty rough shape last time I did see it down there. I don't think it's there anymore. I haven't seen it for a while. Mm -hmm. That was that uh, sky blue colored fish form, yeah? Are we thinking of this? Am I thinking of the right thing? I don't know. <laughs> Where is it? Well, Down it was the entrance. So by the by the sign you were just talking about. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it like thrown up on the top of the wall over there, and the, and then it sat in the uh, the little uh, retaining wall, grassy area for a while. But I haven't I haven't seen it. Um, okay, um, so that's an action. Anybody yeah. to do that? They can let us know if it's there. Yeah. Uh, the bronze sculpture is still there, unless somebody stole yeah. it uh, recently. No, it uh, yeah, again. that's it. Okay. And I remember, uh, Maureen, didn't you? Weren't you doing a bunch of digging on that one? Yeah, it didn't quite come to a landing. Though I'm just looking back. We did this through the Heritage Commission stuff last October, and. Who got involved? Did Tess Taylor get involved? And it was around and Sarah Haxby, maybe? It, it doesn't seem to have come to, to a landing. Um, I mean, we, it probably just makes, I mean, would it be Metro? metro? I'm, I'm not sure. I, 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 thought, I thought it was, and, and it had come, the funding had come through, um, a BC gaming grant or something like that. There, there was, there was a, there was funding uh, that came from outside the community for that. Hmm. We, we also, there, there was a newspaper article. Do you recall, Steph? There was a newspaper article about when the piece was initially yes. installed, but I don't think that that clarified either ownership. Or responsibility, and I'm I'm not sure if there's been any maintenance done since it was put in place. I mean, it's, it looks like it's in okay shape to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can try to dig that article up because I think it came across my desk. Yeah. At least get a date on there, and we can all. Okay. Let's put uh, yeah. Let's put ownership and responsibility. We'll put Metro in there, and then a question mark. Um, okay. I, I'm pretty sure we determined it had it fell to them. Um, well, it must have. It's on their property, right? Mm -hmm. It's bronze, uh, so we don't need a question mark there. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, look at how much we're getting done already. This is great. Uh, yeah, hopefully that newspaper article also can give us a date. 
Okay, sorry, I'm just going to save this version. Sorry about that. No, nope, all good. Okay. Gotta keep it organized. <laughs> um spirit of the flame yep we uh that's all good we've got uh, ownership and responsibility so that's us that's us uh well ownership is um um sorry what's her name now or what's their name now uh bell ringers they own the property do they and they 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 paid to have it moved up so w- would the ownership technically be theirs oh we were going to we were going to draft a a letter to um, to have them sign that they claimed ownership of the work and that we BIM would uh, take on the responsibility to maintain it. I don't think that was done. So I think that's that a Shauna era. That was Shauna era, definitely. Yep. I remember that on my day two on the job. <laughs> that's become an action item for me. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, go, it's Jill. It's still a pending action item. <laughs> um, but so how, how, how could they own it when yeah. it was paid for by um, the Olympic grant? Uh, no, the I, I, I thought the Olympic grant paid the, the fees for the artist to produce it. Was there... Was there uh, th- there was no, oh, maybe, maybe the ownership question is, a, is still open because it yeah. went from the library over to private property and they just donated the access to the private property to put yeah. the work up. Yeah. I think uh-huh. So I believe it's publicly owned, but it happens to be sitting on a piece of private. Ah, property. so that's what the doc, that's what the letter, the agreement letter with, um, with them would, would outline is you agree to allow this work on your property and BIM takes responsibility, ownership and responsibility for maintenance on it. Yes. Okay. Huh. It's like doing 2018 all over again. Uh. <laughs> 2019. Um, they allow, so draft a letter to the bell ringer saying that they allow the sculpture on their property but BIM is responsible for liability and maintenance. Yeah, and that the letter should state that they aren't, they aren't allowed to um, do anything with or affecting the sculpture uh, with, without, um, without our approval. Okay. Yeah, and probably a phone call first so that yeah. the letter coming out of the blue doesn't. Be- yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, the letter. I. Do you have a letter like that? I. We could uh, use. I don't know. I can dig something up. I, I'll make the phone. I know the bell ringers um, uh, through the gallery work. Uh, so. Um, I'm happy to, if you want to throw that action item on my plate, Steph, I'll, I'll okay. do that. Thank you. Phone call and then follow up. I'll draw, I'll draft a letter um, and send it out to every, all of you for some, some of your thoughts and additions, et cetera. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, condition, uh, we can, we can say that it's good and was um, refurbished was it 2020 or 2021? 2021? 2021, I think. Yep. I do notice, however, that the red paint that was used is, is not sticking. And I think it got, I think it's probably um, acrylic paint put over top of an oil-based coating, maybe a wood protector or something. So it's not, uh, it's not holding up very well uh so yeah um okay uh the spectator on that, but sorry it was 2020 that that work was done sorry. because it was before okay. i started yeah oh okay good thank you yeah. so the spectator um i received an update today f- about it um So first of all, in terms of ownership and responsibility, it's a great big question mark and um, could probably put shared BIM and school district 45 on that. 
because of the process of acquisition and installation, it was basic. It, it was mostly just done without anybody yeah. actually. So not through any kind of process. It was just no. happened kind of thing. It, yeah, it just it happened. For it. Um, the Stacy Beamer essentially paid for it. Um, so Shane, Shane, Shane carved Shane, it and donated. Shane carved. No, he didn't. It wasn't donated. Shane was commissioned to carve the eagle at the very top. Okay. And the cedar that it's on is actually, it was one of the trees that was felled from the turf field when that was being built okay. and it was stored and, and thought, thought that was an interesting use of putting it back there. So the situation now is related to the status of it. Oh, wait, because, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Steph, you're, uh, get, get that Stacy Beamer stuff down. Uh, that's for the spectator, I think. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, oh, no. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm thinking just sort of now that the interruption has taken place, um, we might want to have like a private version of this document and a public version of this document. So what all these detailed notes can be for our files and then, okay. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Sorry, right. Jillian. No, 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 no. Um, so the condition of it now is that there's a, there's a copper band that was installed around the base of the, the cedar and water has been infiltrating behind that copper band. And now there's a lot of rot mm. happening on the cedar. And the school district is, is concerned about the, the safety of this. It is, there was no seismic assessment for it. Like it was, and th there are th three braces on it, but the one that the back is short and um, it, it, there's no possibility of it staying as is on site in any permanent fashion. So um, I think we do need to make a plan as to what we could do with this. And the school has presented a, a few options, um, but base essentially the base that it's on, it's not deemed stable and safe. Right. It's not, it's not an imminent safety risk at all. Like there's no safety to children. So I think if we had a plan and, and I was thinking maybe if we had a plan for relocating it or whatever we want to do and we built the budget for that and, and proposed, presented it as an option for next year budgeting, um, I think that would be fine with the school if we, if we wanted to include that in a maintenance proposal for next year. And that would come out of our budget or municipal budget? The public art, this is public, public art, art, so it's oh, all part okay. of the public art budget, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but what I'm proposing is that maybe it's not part of our allocated 10,000 a year that could go, should be, I feel should be going towards new projects. And um, But clear, clearly we didn't budget for it right now, and it'll take some time and work to do. Right, uh, for sure. Um, um, Jillian, is, yeah, go agree to it. Sorry. No. Uh, Jillian, do you did you get a sense that the school would be willing to contribute to? Um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I I didn't ask that question at this stage, quite honestly, and I probably should have. But it was also, it wasn't the right people to ask that question of okay. either. So uh, and, and oh, the sensitivity yep. that was sorry, Scott, the nope. sensitivity that with the moving of the um, of the other yeah. the spirit of the flame. Um, we'd have to be very careful if, if there's a plan to move it somewhere else that we ask the permission from the artists or the owner, because that's a pretty sensitive issue well, to there, move it. I agree, I think we would ask, but I think in this particular situation, it was given to the site slash muni. It, 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 it's all rather vague, right. um, but I don't think the person who who put it up has has any intention or any. They don't have any jurisdiction. But, they, right. they wouldn't have any jurisdiction over their veto whether they could move it or not move it, especially if it's a liability issue. Uh, that's pretty serious stuff. And now that we've identified it as such, um, you know, we have to be seen to be working on that plan. Uh, uh, otherwise, there's some, you know, irresponsibility problems uh, if we if we aren't. 
Um, but definitely based on that, um, Jamie, uh, that previous situation, we definitely need to notify um, yeah. about about any pending plans of, of, of altering it, it in any way. Um, I, I would like to ask the school uh, if, if they're, if they're, so I guess there's two questions. Are they open to continuing to host it in any new placement or form on that property? That would be one question that we would need to have answered. And if they would be willing to contribute uh, some, I mean, they must have a, a landscaping maintenance uh, budget um, that would probably fall within that sort of thing. I don't think the cost would be too onerous. Um, uh, you know, obviously, depending on how the how it might be reconfigured, the 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 issue also is the the title of it uh, is so integral to its placement. Um, that uh, that's something we'd have to keep in mind as well. I think I can answer the first of those questions and that school, yes, is willing for it to be on the property. Okay. Um, and they, you know, they had a few suggestions, you know, even if the base is cut down to where there's no rot yet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and installed in a way that will prevent the, the same situation occurring again. So yeah, uh, that's it's it's cedar sitting on a mount. Uh, it's gonna just keep happening over time. But uh, you know, it gets a it gets a decent life. What is it, two thousand eleven? So that's over ten years. That's not so bad, Isn't actually. There significant drainage issues in that area of the school as well. So it might be getting a lot of water. It's yeah. raised it, though, uh, so it's not on the ground. I think it's just the water coming in the sides of the copper base plate. Okay. Yeah. Further to the artist notification issue is also, um, I wonder if we're, we wouldn't want to give Shane first right of refusal on, or at least, uh, you know, please submit um, a quote uh, to do whatever it is we would like him to do, or, or, or to do whatever needs to be done to the work um, that he might have an opportunity to, to bid on that project. Yeah, is everybody, everybody, make, that makes sense. Everybody's agreement there. Okay. Um, okay, just uh, let's keep moving on here. Um, let's watch our time as well, uh, Steph. I know we what do we have twenty minutes earmarked for this, but I think we've we sped through the first bits fairly quickly. So I feel like it's really good work, though. This has been yeah. different often. Well, it's not much, so let's we can just get through the whole thing. I, I don't okay. think uh, that will be too too difficult. Um, five thirty. Yeah, we're good. Uh, Artisan Square Mosaic. Uh, does anybody know what that is? Is that part of the oh, Montessori? Yeah. Ah, you mean in the yard of the oh. Montessori? Is it part of the... Um, we should include photos in this too. Yeah. That's a good idea for those of us that are new. Mm -hmm. on the island <laughs> okay so let's let's put a bunch of question marks across that one then steph um so we should confirm that it's still there uh oh here artists are art, art specific co-op oh, okay which is uh but that the co-op moved right so maybe it's not actually where they are now where did they move did they not I don't think they're still in the same place i thought but they I moved don't... buildings slightly oh same I... See, same what? as being an artisan but i i thought they moved buildings slightly or oh. size things down uh no i don't think so i but they're next door to the Montessori, so um, maybe it is in the Montessori yard. Right, which is now fenced off. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Paw prints, anyone? So maybe that would be like a Dunbury oh. question, if that's, isn't that all that area his property? Right. 
Would Doug Barry have commissioned it or own it or? Okay. Could we go back to the bronze sculpture for a moment? The spectator or, or oh, bronze sculpture. Yeah. Research. Yeah. Okay. I just found um, an article from the undercurrent and the sculpture was put in place in 2001. Nice. So it was a project of the uh, of BIPA, the Bowen Island Heritage Preservation Association. Um, it was funded by the uh, Metro Vancouver Parks Committee, GBRD Parks Committee, and something called the Canadian Millennium Partnership Program. And it was intended from the get-go to be um, public art. It's presented in the article as Bowen Island's first piece of public art. Um, so there's a bunch of additional information in this in this uh, uh, article, and I'll just forward it on for for our records. So maybe that can be an appendix to this inventory. Well, it'll, it'll maybe stop us going down the rabbit hole. Of yeah. Yeah. Where did this <laughs> come from? Well, so did you see the Parks Committee Canadian? What was GBRD? The, the GBRD Parks Committee. Mm -hmm. and the Canadian Millennium Partnership Program. So they must have been funding art programs for um, uh, the year 2000. Right, the Millennium, yeah. Yeah. There's a statement from the Deputy Prime Minister. They're super proud to uh, support this project to the tune of a maximum of almost $33,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it Dale Fraser was the artist? Yes. Oh, cool. Nice work, Maureen. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Detective. Detective <laughs> Maureen. That's right. The sleuth. Does it list a title? Uh, interestingly, it doesn't. And that I, I know that we've tracked down the title previously, but this article does not mention a title. There is a small uh, plaque on the concrete, but I haven't read it recently, so uh, I, I couldn't tell you what it, it, what's written there. Could you add a note, check plaque stuff? Um, in our... Um, in our um, Condition action. status, when you check plaque. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. I can I can go over sometime and take a photo of it and send it okay. to you, Steph. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, of the sculpture and the plaque. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why mm -hmm. not? This is turning into a catalog. Let's let's populate <laughs> this document. This is great. All right. Okay, so back down to the artist. Back down to. Uh, nope, I got a note saying Doug oh. Barry can be contacted on that. Sure. Okay. Thank okay. you. That's a good. Yeah. Good. Paw prints. Paw prints. Uh, any, anyone have any info on this thing at all? It's at Bix. Where's, where's the Muriel Nielsen Peace Garden? Yeah. I have no idea. I think that's the, the rhododendron garden, just as you're going. Was that uh, the memorial garden? I believe uh -huh. so. Yeah. Um, but that's not near Bix, is it? Yes, oh, not the not the memorial garden. Oh, um, but this is something associated with Muriel Nielsen, not. Oh. And the memorial garden is something something different. And um, Sarah Haxby would be able to tell us more about that. Okay. Um. I've just got someone as some of these actions. So I think so they're not super. Actually, I'm just thinking, is that the area where there's the two benches back in there behind the rhododendrons? That's where Sarah and I sat today. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're I on the action. So. I think so. I can go and have a look there, see if there's anything to find out. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so then. Did we lose some from? Uh, oh, I see what happened. Okay, gotcha. Oh, there was his last name. Okay. 
forest to the sea mosaic. Is that the wall of Bix? I believe so. So Bix is going to own it. Or school district 45, it's part of their building. Yeah, let, let's yeah, let's say to. that they will. Yeah, I, <laughs> the less we have to be responsible for, the better. What kind of shape is it in? If it's that old, does it need to be repainted? Is it a is it a mural or a mosaic? Well, Bill Hoops is part of it. I'm assuming he's it's a painting. It's I a think it's a mosaic. I think it's it stolen. It a oh. mm -hmm. Okay, we should confirm whether that still exists then. So who wants to talk to Bill Hoops? Jamie, do you see him? Mm -hmm. Can I put you on him? that? Yep. Can you add Beachstone Mosaic as well then when you Beach make your Stone. call? Oh, the he's on one. that one and the he's next on that one. one too. Oh, and the next one. All three, three of them. Going. All three, okay. Oh. So he had a bunch of work at Bix going on, okay. Okay, I will ask him. Thank you very kindly. So that's four things I'm doing. I'm like at the top of the heap right now. So. Yeah, you are, you're winning. You're winning. Come on. <laughs> I don't see that as winning. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so we'll find out that. So when we're contacting people, the questions are all that top column. I'll send something out. Okay. And where is this one, Beachstone? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize. What is the um, material for the forest to the sea mosaic? Do we know? I can ask Bill all those questions. Okay. All those questions. And then the Beachstone will stay, will stay fixed. Okay. Was that the same? Oh. I think that may be between the benches where I'm thinking behind the rhododendrons. So I'm just going to go and so look. So the paw prints area? <laughs> Is there something down at the snake field? It's in between. It's right sort of, it's right behind where you park. Like if you... If you pull in and park like closest to the school, if you were able to look through the rhododendrons right there, that's where I'm thinking. Oh. And Maureen's nodding, so I think I've got it right. Yeah. Okay. I think you're right. Um, Steph, that be be uh, Beachstone Mosaic, uh, the location just needs to shift over one, one cell there. Oh, thanks. And so you, there's another action for you, Jamie. I love this one as well. Oh, Which no, the other way. Oh, what did I do? All right. Yeah. Let me move this into Excel. And then the, I guess the rest are question marks on all those again. I'll, I'll ask them all that about okay. all that. Super dupe. <laughs> lots of questions. Yeah, lots of question marks. Well, it gives us gives us something to do. That's good. <laughs> gives Jamie something to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, spirit of bone so mosaic. You're gonna do all this one too. Yeah. Okay. All the bills. That's easy. Okay. Carved totem. Yes. Uh, I've never big. seen one down there. Is it, it right down by the by the um, the club, or is it at the turn off when you go to uh, you know one way or the other at the uh -huh. top of the hill? We're we're uh, kind of where Jillian lives, close to that. I don't know. I don't know where it is. Have you seen it, Jillian? That's what I'm trying to remember. <laughs> is it old? I probably go past it every single day. So yeah, but um, there is a totem at Bix by the outdoor classroom that we haven't covered in a, is, is it this one instead of being at Tunstall Bay, it's at Bix? By the, by the portable, by the parking lot? 
well, you know where that outdoor classroom area is. Yeah, down by the snake field. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's something there's down a, there. There's a totem. Okay. So let's see. There's totem at CNIB. Totem at. But Tonsal I've never Bay. seen one at Tunstall Bay. Here, community welcome poll. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't oh, that's the one. Far enough. That's, that's, that's the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to call that snake field. It's official uh, name. Okay, cool. Because there's snakes on that field? Because once yeah, they saw a snake. <laughs> oh, so now forever a snake field. Love cool. it. I bet the kids just love that. Hey, watch this. You ready? Gateway mural. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. And oh. just so you know, you've got to add the... Um, the, the carving from Simon James on the clamshell stage here at the at the hearth. Oh, it's is that confirmed? Kind of, yes. Oh, nice. Wicked. Yes, he's starting to work on it. So it's an, another. Oh, I piece did of not hear that. That's amazing. No, Fantastic. I haven't announced it yet. You guys are kind of the first public people to know. Okay, I love being in the know. <laughs> So if we go back up. Sorry, I got all excited. I'm sorry. Yeah. So Art totem, Tensil Bay, question marks. Jillian, can I put that on you to poke around, see if there's a plaque or anything? Being a Tensil Bay dweller. Yeah, I just, um, my guess is that it's something that's quite old and we don't necessarily want municipal responsibility for <laughs> okay. getting involved in, in that. But, sure. Um, well, but we, we should, uh, we should at least note it. It's on here now. We can decide, yeah. you know, if you take a look at it and go, holy cow, let's get away from that. I don't we'll see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything. We'll take it off. Okay. And um, none of these are to be so urgent. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So that's, I'm going to call that tombstone. I'd, I'd also like to put in notes uh, for, for any of these that are totem that we review the usage of the term. Um, Oh yeah, is it spirit mm -hmm. pool. Well, well, I think we can. You know, I think the uh, any any name changes or anything that might need to happen is going to have to involve whatever artist or or owner we can identify. And if none of those exist, then you know that's up to us to determine. I just want to make sure that I, I I want that I want us to have that conversation. Okay. Um, when 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 applicable here. Does that work? Sure. Yeah. That. And the same for the totem at uh, CNIB. Yeah. Thank you. And then what's totemic imagery? Uh. Yeah. That's uh. at sign near the clubhouse. Oh. Okay, maybe Jillian, poor you, there's so much art in Tunstall Bay. Who <laughs> oh, no. okay. That may have been for the trap because that was filmed in that area. In the 60s or 70s? Yeah. The trap, that sounds great. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Exciting. I was like really seen it touching him, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Alan Bates, I think it was. Yeah, it's a very old piece. I got that wrong. Yeah. 1966. Okay. Wow. Shot in the wilderness of the Canadian province of British Columbia. On Bowen, the wilderness of Bowen. That's the Bay Clubhouse. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> they all went for a swim after the shooting. Um, back up, I think. Uh, or David Cameron's bench at the causeway. So, so we know that, that it exists. Oh, I love that bench. Is that BIM? The causeway? No, it's probably Metro, isn't it? Yeah, if it's on the causeway, Metro. But I'm, again, I'm not sure about the actual ownership. I know, wasn't it being maintained, repaired a little while back. It was, yeah, somebody did that. And, it, and I don't know who did it. Maybe the family of the 
the couple, the name that's on there. Um, oh, what do they call it? Uh, oh, there's a name. I just saw it the other day. Well, I go by that all the time. I can certainly uh, okay. take a peek and some pictures um, of yeah. that. Okay. So I'm just confused if if it's on someone's land and it doesn't automatically have to be the responsibility of that person or even owned by that person, other than this bell ring there. Such, I, I think know. because there's not been a policy in place, like for instance, this story bench was probably donated by the family on a spot that this older couple probably loved to sit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it, they just made it happen without following any sort of rules. Mm -hmm. Whereas now there are buckets of rules. <laughs> there are agreements. If you Too want to put a bench on, a, on Metro land and, and do it through process, you're, you're making agreements uh, related to its maintenance and related to its removal at a certain point. Mm. Right. What is this made of wood and is that? It's just wood, I think. Yeah. And when, maybe there'll be something there. You can ask Dave Cameron. Do you know Dave Cameron, Scott? I do not. Okay. Well, I, I do. Um, okay. What do we want to ask? What year? How did it happen? What year? Sure. Who, I'll, who, I'll, who's fixing it? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'll ask him the question. All the columns. So basically, I'll send this out to you, but all these columns at the top. Um, Created by ownership if they know when. Yeah, a little story would be nice. It's gonna, okay. be, a book. It's gonna be a book. I can do that. Okay. <laughs> um, this is good. Yeah, every, every, yeah, everybody's name is on these things. Uh, uh, I'd like to see all this filled in by their next meeting. You <laughs> <laughs> wreck the fun. <laughs> now we can do it. We can do it. So then the metal gates at the Bowen Children's Center and Montessori School and oh, all these metal gates. Mm, mm -hmm. Who wants to call Stacy Beamer? I can do that. Actually, Phil, let me throw that over to you. Oh, Phil. Phil. I, sorry, but I actually question, I'd like to question if they should be on this list. I, okay. I, I, not... agree. I agree, Jamie. I don't think it should because Stacy beamer has created a lot of beautiful gates and whatnot throughout the island for private people so uh, i totally agree that is a legitimate question and a conversation we're going to need to have about a lot of these things um uh but i want to leave that for another time but yeah let's okay. note the question is well it's art uh but should it be part oh. of the should it be part of our registry? What are we calling this? Inventory, public mm -hmm. art inventory. Should it be? Should it be part of the inventory? Like building it? Okay. Okay. Fine. So Stacy has created these and then donated them to well, these. He would have been paid for them. Oh, okay. But okay. Greed is right. He's done. He's done similar things all over the island. So if we if mm -hmm. we would accept this one. For instance, why why not all of them? All of them, yeah. yeah so yeah, true. And then that opens up the question about like some excellent carpenter making a nice cedar fence. Yeah, sure. Classify that. Windows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, which then begs the question: If Phil is going to call Stacy, what's he asking? Maybe he should not. Oh, Phil, you don't have not. action yet. Yeah. Okay. Delete. You're, uh, you're, uh, you're off the hook there, Phil. Okay, cool. Oh, for the time being, Phil. For the time being, but we've still got a couple more to do. <laughs> On maybe, the radar maybe, now. Maybe the CNIB uh, thing. It's a nice walk down there. Yeah. Uh, let's see if anything... It, does anybody have any information or are those all question marks? Where is the CNIB? Canadian... It's Institute the lodge. Right. Oh, like, by, like on Cardina? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But it used oh. to be that property used to be owned by the CNIB and they sold it. Okay. So I'm not sure who the owners are now. So do you, I want, 
Would yeah. there be any information about the original owners in the covenant that is on? Probably. That? They, that I mean, the CNIB has owned that property or did own that property for many, many years because my grandmother who lived in the CNIB Lodge in Vancouver, uh, went there for her summer holiday. Wow. Now, that was a very long time ago, because you know how old I am. So, <laughs> my grandmother. So it was their property for very many years. And it's only in the last, what, five years or so that it got sold? Ah, uh, wow, that recently. Okay, yeah. So that's um, all question marks then, uh, okay. stuff. Yeah. I've tracked down an article published by Camp Bowen, and uh, they have an article on the Bowen Lodge totem pole. Um, it was built in '26 by a member of the Sea Shelf Band. Sorry, '26. 1926. Holy cow! Commissioned by the Union Steamships. Wow. And then they offered it. So it stood in front of the Union Steamships uh, offices, and then Union Steamships gave it to uh, the CNIB in 1961. There's tons of detail here in, oh, this, fantastic. in this article. So I'll send that on. Thank you. You know, I think commissioned by might be its own column at this point. Created by, commissioned by, owned by. Yeah, it's an important part of the story. Mm. No. Yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're not wrong. Um, Just more work. Okay. <laughs> yes. No. I'm doing it. <laughs> I've got the power. I, I wonder if. Uh, and that's only going to apply stuff to only a few of these and it, and it could be a notes thing okay. uh, rather than its own. Cause I, you know, I, uh, you know, ownership and responsibility are very important things to okay. make clear because it determines who's going to do what to it. But the commissioning okay. part was a thing, you know, event that happened in the past. It's, it's good to know if we have that information, but it doesn't really impact much going forward. Okay. So notes part of the story. Okay. Thank you. So Maureen, um, you're so successful at looking things up. Can you look up the sale of this property to whom it got sold to? Uh, it's a company, Victoria. Yeah. Haven't there been two sales? Didn't it go from CNIB to someone and then to the people of Victoria? Well, I just remember um, when we were building the the annex to the library, the gallery, um, we had some meetings with the new owner about them donating funds um, and they would name the place. Hmm. But I don't remember what their name was. Okay. I mean, it shouldn't be hard to, to track down. Um, it might even be in the business license directory. Um, I'll take a look. I'll see what I can find. I can look right now. Should we carry on? What time do you have to leave, Julian? Went up on six. Right. I, sorry, I just looked up the ferry and it's just left Horseshoe Bay. So, oh, okay. And I'm a walk on. I just need to get down there and put my car okay. somewhere. So, perfect. Um, you know, oh, sorry, uh, Steph. The, since we know it was a uh, you know, member of the seashell band uh, doing the totem pole at the lodge, you can, you can pull the need to explore the name change. What's the proper term, Scott? Um, it's not a, I, I don't have an answer to that. Uh, I, it's not necessarily the proper term. Um, it, it's just that the usage of the term totem by non-indigenous um, is is problematic uh, uh, on the West Coast. I know, like I'm just having this discussion with another artist in Vancouver, uh, who has given me all kinds of reasoning around the etymology of uh, the the word totem, which you know has been 
you know, adopted uh, after the, you know, after its initial uh, usage. But um, for me, context is very, the context is paramount and, and we can't be on the West coast and, and dealing with, um, you know, um, r- repairing relation, indigenous relations, uh, but still, you know, uh, adopting or co-opting terms that uh, are clearly um, connected with their, with their presence and, and, and not ours. So um, it's just a conversation I want us to have as a group as part of the public art committee um, because uh, cult, that what we're doing is culture and we're, we're stewarding culture. And so we have, to, we have to be having these discussions. Okay. Don't have an answer for you, but we have to have okay. a discussion. Okay, no, that's cool. <laughs> okay. We'll put Jillian on the imagery. If Jillian is okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And then the, um, oh, there, Jamie, you're up. Me? Oh, what? Where is this? Oh, another one, mosaic and clay installation. By Bill Hoops and Clay Where's that? Oh. I don't know where that is. Jackie knocked this together. Maybe ask Jackie where that is. Yeah, or I can ask Bill when I speak to him and see if he if that triggers something. You're gonna send me this list, right? I will. I'm probably not gonna be able to get to it, like uh, maybe for like day after tomorrow. Okay. Soon. Yeah. Okay, Mastodon. What do we? That's have? gone. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah, he dismantled it. Yeah. I don't want to exactly. delete things. We just added things. Ooh. We, we have a big pile of archives. Ribbons. We have a big pile of wood in the back, in the back, and someone put some big eyes and a big tusk on it. So it looks like a mastodon. Oh, funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> and was it um, taken away? Was decommissioned the work? Well, he, t- he took it down. It was cr- certainly creating a lot of problems for the home, the landowners around. Oh. 2022? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can note uh, by the artist, just so the, uh, mm-hmm. like it was decommissioned, dismantled by the artist. Yeah. Okay. And the crosswalk, that's going to be um, um, Oscar My- Oscar Knowles. Yeah. Is that come and go? Is that, I mean, I don't know where, where is that? Uh, it's it's come, come, but it hasn't gone. Oh, we oh, only it's, did it once. Oh, it's so coming. Os- okay. Oscar and Diana. It's oh yeah, right. Oh, so they just paint paint the crosswalk rainbow colors or something? No, um, Oscar has slugs and Diana has whales. Oh, cool. It'll be by the school. Is that where it is? The slugs are but mixed. The, no, it yeah. was Diana did salmon, wasn't it? That was salmon spawning. Honestly, I can't remember, and it's so faded um, at, at this point. Jamie, it's it's down by you. It's the crosswalk to get you walk to on it. You walk on to the ferry from the library cross right there. And it's it's being maintained to some extent by public works staff, but. Um, hmm they've been modified as a result of the maintenance work and I don't recall when they were last refreshed. What year was that? 2015? 2015, yeah. Look at this information. Note um, or condition. So Public Works has the stencils. Yeah. But I don't don't think they love it. (laughs) I think it's a little bit frustrating work for them. So, the, um, some years ago, um, Oscar's mom uh, asked if he could do it again. And uh, there's actually a council resolution on the books to re- regarding redoing the, um, the slug uh, crosswalk. Hmm. Um, council. To have to have Oscar do it or yeah 
That was the request. Mm. Wasn't Maybe acted on. Early? I think it was a change of council, change of staff involved. Okay. Um, there no no actions on this one right now. We've got a long list. Is that okay, Scott? Mm -hmm. Okay, community welcome poll, Simon James and Bick's children by the Snake Field. Uh, that's that's the what you were talking about before, Greta. Oh, she's not here. Okay. That's gonna have to be the SD45, right? Owners. Question mark. It is, it is owned by them. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was something else down there, but. Just, I, sorry, I, I may have to run. Um, I may have to run, but not right yep. now. But if you see me disappear, I have some things I have to deal with in the gallery. Not a problem. Yeah, if any, at any time, anybody's got to go. Right? That's, that's all good. Gateway mural, that is Sarah, Paula, and Di. Is that the order? Mm hmm Owned by BIM, made of canvas and acrylic. Uh, no, it would be uh, plywood and um, oh, plywood and paint. That would be 2022. That is block. Notes. Admission is excellent. <laughs> oh, I know. Note is ongoing improvements, including Braille Vantage. What do you think of that? Nice. I'm still carving, Jamie. Uh, yeah, it's obviously owned it's by... not done yet. It'll be owned, I think, by the hearth. Although it's on BIM property. So I don't know. Jillian, what do you think? Um, I guess I would have thought maybe some of that conversation may have already taken place about the ownership and responsibility and he, he, but I haven't been part of that so right right um I think that it's BIM that's responsible for the upkeep of like the stage probably the art piece but I think that it's a joint ownership between the hearth and BIM um maybe it's probably within the the MOU of what of the project I would imagine right and I have to look that up. I'm not sure. Does it have I know that I know that we were advised to, like for instance, the benches to um, not use wood so that the maintenance wouldn't be high to upkeep those. Can I ask you, Jamie, to check on the MOU and, and report back? Yeah. Also, just in terms of insurance, um, the ownership question. I'm assuming would be important. Um, that question. How how is the artwork insured against damage? Has that been thought through? No, no, that's a good question. Um, because Does that you, actually happen? Ha has it happened? No. no. Do we do we actually insure the artwork? Well, I think, and Scott, you could correct me, um, but it's very difficult to insure artwork because you know, it has to be evaluated and um, I don't know. That's a really good question and I can't, I don't have an answer. The, the Municipal Insurance Authority, my understanding is that's our municipal insurer. Mm. And I don't know what their rules would be around the ins insurance for public art or and whether they're considered, whether public art is considered a special category or whether public art on a wall, for example, is considered a, 
like the 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 wall is the important thing more so than the than the than the art from their pers perspective. I just don't know how they view public art, mm -hmm. and I, I think given that you know this is that going to be a valuable piece of work, it'd be good to get that. Yeah, clarified. With the com with the building of the community center, there will be public art there. Yeah. Um, so, Jillian, at some point, you have to think about that too, I guess, about how that, how that, on that property, any art work would be insured or maintained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are good questions. Yeah, I think I think typically these things would be listed as assets uh, owned by the municipality or the city or whoever, uh, yeah, because they're on they're on public buildings, um, so they would become assets. But it's I guess it's a question of how we're recording uh, the valuation of the of the asset, um, whether or not it's insured under that or some other kind of category. Curious. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay so um, yeah, I know. Come Jillian on. has to go. Take go. care. Good luck. Get that ferry. Um, and gee, you know, Scott, it's ten after six already. I'm gonna have yeah. to be pretty quick. So. Yeah, I, I'd like to wrap this up. I'm glad we did that, though. Thank you all for your patience. Yeah. Uh, getting just getting through that uh, uh, that list of details, um, Steph. I wonder if we can just um, table what's left yeah. on on that agenda and and uh and adjourn uh for, for today I've, yeah it has been years months and years of deferring that was great work you guys mm -hmm. okay yeah well done thank everyone. you okay Excellent. so are we are we adjourned then i think uh yeah i'm gonna call a meeting uh, uh adjourn the meeting everybody uh, all in favor and yeah. steph i guess uh, next meeting you just send out a doodle poll for us and uh we'll plug away yeah, when in like September, August, no, July? Uh, it should be in July. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, all.